They won't drive me out and they won't give me orders. I know how the country feels whether they do or not. And they're going to find some of this money red hot when they pick it up. I wonder. You don't think it can be done? I don't think you can do it. I've been on a crooked school board, and I know how they jump for cover when you start looking at their books. Well, this isn't exactly a school board. Oh, yes, it is. Only a damn sight less intelligent. <laughs> They've all got their weak spots. They can be had, and they're going to be. Right on this bill, they are. Mr. McLean, there is something about you that vaguely begins to appeal to me. Do you want any help? What kind? I need a job. I was fired this morning. I know all about everything. Have you got any plans? No, I haven't yet. Well, what of it? What I've forgotten is plenty for both of us. And if we can include the setting off of a few bombs, I'd find it a fascinating and congenial occupation. Go on. The house is split just about 50-50 on this bill. A little finagling here and there and a few promises, and you might, yes sir, you might find yourself with a deciding vote in your own little hands. I wouldn't know how to do that. But I would. Oh, they made a foolish move today. They left the nonpartisans out of this bill. There are four or five of them and they could swing Congress if they could just stick in a lump for once. If only we could find beetles. What? The committee didn't give them their beetles, Mr. McLean. Oh, I begin to get you. Of course you do. Now you go out and talk with a few nonpartisans and you'll find yourself among friends. You think it'll work? I'm sure it will. Listen, you're hired. Salary? Whatever it's been. Shall we go to lunch? Why not? I'm hollow. <laughs>